is oil here and we just throw it into our distillation column our distillation tower and are you expecting are you going to expect to make money we find out previously that because each of these products has certain specs specifications you cannot just uh, take the take the stuff from the distillation tower and sell it to the customer now there's another reason why you can't just throw your crude oil into the distillation column and expect to make money is because there may not be enough of these products like uh, we call it petrol or gasoline you have carol and what else diesel right diesel you may not have enough of these light stuff to get enough profit in fact most of the stuff will be called uh, residue a lot of what is in a barrel of oil is just residue this is like tar and bitumen asphalt it's not something you can put in your car or something you can make a lot of money out of so if I throw a barrel of oil into a distillation column how much exactly can I expect so I want to find out what's in a barrel of crude in terms of the hydrocarbon which is basically the oil hydrocarbon content and I want to find out how there's something you can do to the oil you can actually test it and industry has a fancy word for testing it's just called assay it's an assay of a crude and by assaying the crude you can actually find out how much of the crude is going to become petrol when you distill it kerosene, diesel and all that stuff you can find out the hydrocarbon distribution in the crude so what are typical assays like? you have something like brand crude brand crude which is a very standard uh, crude oil and we find that when we assay the crude we have butanes and lighter these are the lighter stuff this is just the gas that comes out the top all the stuff here okay maybe this shouldn't be petrol the one on top is just gas so just imagine yes the topmost product is usually gas butanes let's have a volume percent so for every hundred gallons of oil I throw into the refinery 2.9 will come out as gases lighten up the. this is stuff you can actually use to make mix and match into gasoline 9.2 percent heavy nafta this is like the heavier part of the gasoline because gasoline is a mixture of hydrocarbons this is the light part and this is the heavy part so 21.3 next one kerosene 15.6 diesel or gas oil 16.7 and the nasty residue which is over here we can talk about yeah this is called residue we have vacuum gas oil which is uh, a, a one of the fractions of a residue 24.5 percent short residue that is 9.7 percent uh, yeah so where did I get these numbers from? You can actually find them. Find these numbers in the link I provide in the description. They are from ExxonMobil's website. They have lots of essays of many kinds of crude oil. Alright? So this is this is typically what a good crude oil would look like. And if you're wondering what residue, what short residue is, what vacuum gas oil is, um, you can explain in further videos, but just for now.
right? Let's say you have crude oil, you throw it into a distillation column, and this is an atmospheric pressure, one atmosphere of pressure. The stuff that comes out the bottom of this atmospheric <coughs> distillation column is called long residue. Now there's a lot of stuff in, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of stuff in long residue. There may be some diesel still stuck in there or some, uh, some other components which are not as heavy and you can still recover them. You send this to another tower. They call it a vacuum tower. This operates at like 50 or 150 millibar. It's a very low pressure. So what, th what this does is that it lowers the boiling points of the oil. So by applying the same amount of heat, I can still separate more into separate this long residue, which is the bottoms of the atmospheric tower, into more fractions. So vacuum gas oil will come out of this vacuum tower, more on the top, and at the bottom we have what is called short residue. Okay, so hope that clears things up. But uh, yeah, so that's just to give you a familiarization of the term, you know where you can get the assays from. But you can see easily that like 30 something percent is at the bottom even for a good crude 30, 30 something percent is not going to be like gasoline or diesel it's going to be other stuff that you can't really use like just straight out from the distillation tower and this is already premium stuff and you pay a very good price for that and nowadays you have like 60 USD per barrel of for Brent. That's uh, November 2017. November 2017 prices. You can go check oilprices.com or something. You can check the barrel of Brent crude. All right. What about the not so premium stuff? Well, there's a blend they called Basara Basra Heavy. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. If you know, please tell me. Basra heavy. All right. So what's the volume percent? What's the volume distribution like? Butane and lighter, 1.6. Light naphtha, 4.6. Oops. Heavy naphtha, 11.3. So you can see your gasoline content is almost half of what a premium crude is. Kerosene. 11.4 not so much diesel or gas oil 14.2 and we come to the long residual stuff 29.3 for vacuum gas oil and 27.5 wow 27.5 at the most bottom the most bottom stuff that you you can't really use to well, put it in your car. All you can do is like either mix it into some heavy fuel oil or put it on roads. You can imagine that's going to be quite cheap. And as expected, this not so premium stuff actually trades for cheaper than a brand crude. So bars, bars right heavy. Let's go check oilprice.com. Is 55.85 per barrel today. As of the time I checked, 55.85. And Brent, oh, this is 62. As of November, yeah. I just checked the oil price at about 62.72. Yeah, so you see, the light stuff, the premium stuff, which contains a lot of all these, is going to be more expensive than this. Because this is going to be like more not so useful stuff all right so um this this crude is known as a heavy crude heavy crude actually has lots of bottom of the barrel stuff this is long residue bottom of the barrel a lot of it and a light crude a light crude will have less of this bottom stuff and more of this so if you hear people talking about light or heavy crude, light means more gasoline, more petrol, more carol, and more expensive. Heavy is cheaper. 
but it's more of more of that um, heavy stuff, yeah, residue. So usually, what people use to measure a crude's lightness or heaviness is not going to be this, because this is like six or seven numbers. They have something called the API density. API density is the inverse density, inverse of density. So the more your API, the lighter your crude. And this bars are heavy. This API is about 24. And Brent, the good stuff, 40. So an API 40 and above usually considered uh, light crude. So I hope you can appreciate from this video that no two oil wells are going to be the same. If you're going to drill oil for in different places, this one comes from Iraq, this one comes from the North Sea, you're going to have different compositions of hydrocarbons. So you're going to have different pricing. All right. So that's about it for today, about the hydrocarbon distribution, just to give you a, a flavor of it. And we've talked about essays as well. So now it's time for your homework. So tell me what WTI is, WTI crew is, where does it come from and how much is it costing today? Please post it in the comment section and tell me the price and when you got the price and which website you got it from. And the other thing is that when oil, when you hear oil is going to $60 a barrel or $50 a barrel or oil, oil prices are rising or dropping and you hear like $100 a barrel, yeah, what crude oils are you usually referring to? Now put this uh, in the comment section as well and the answers will be in the description thanks for watching guys hope you have a good day and bye bye